Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this edition of Video Adrenaline for Creative Cow. We're going to explore the interaction between Adobe Photoshop and Adobe After Effects. Today, focusing on advanced color correction using the lab color mode. Let's see how it works. Now, the lab mode is a specialty mode, and you'll find it under the image menu. And what it allows you to do is look at an image in a different color space, one where there's two color channels and one detail or grayscale channel. So let's take a look. We'll go ahead and choose Image, Mode, Lab Color. And if we look at the Channels panel here, you'll see that you have a grayscale channel and the A channel with the red and green and the B channel with the blue and yellow. Now, we can add a curve adjustment here to modify this. What I want to do is force the color to change inside a specific region. So let's toss on curves. And we can isolate that by going just to the A channel. And I'm going to put two pins here in the middle so the midpoints don't change, but start to remap what used to be red. And you see I could pull that up and make it redder or pull it down and start to reassign the color to orange or green. Pull that all the way down and it's a nice rich green. Now you might be thinking, that wasn't that hard. I could have selected that and done it too. But the cool thing is, is this is footage. And using Adobe Photoshop Extended, you can open up a footage layer. So if we look at the animation timeline here and we start to drag through, you see that that's a full motion video clip with grass blowing in, as well as a pan, and there's not a single selection or a mask needed to be made. Now, let's get this out and take it into After Effects so we can do a little more compositing tricks. I've got this here, I'm happy with it, and I'm going to go ahead and save it. There's the green. And what I want to do now is do a little bit of trickery. Let's head on into After Effects and we'll bring both layers in. There's the green. Here's the original movie. I'll put that into a new composition and I'll drag the truck on top of it. Now, as I drag through there, you see it's full motion. There was a little gap there at the edges. That's just because it didn't recognize the pixel aspect ratio for the shot. I can do Command Option F and it compensates for the pixel aspect ratio. You see it's just laying right on top there. And we have the color shift. Now you're saying, I didn't want a red truck, nor did I want a green truck. That's okay. We've got two different colors here, so we can create a difference mat pretty easily. Let's go ahead and we'll change the mode here and set this top layer to difference. It's going to show us what's different between the two layers. And you see, in this case, the only thing we affected was the truck. So we get a pretty clear vision here that the truck has a different color. I can now go ahead and add an adjustment layer. And what I'll do on that adjustment layer is just start to modify the colors. So we'll do a black and white adjustment. And I'll start to play with that until I'm happy with what I'm getting. It's looking pretty good. And if necessary, I could follow that up with a little bit of levels. I'll clip the blacks for those little spots down there in the field. And let's just punch up the whites a little bit so they're a little brighter. And what we have there is a pretty good track mat. Now if we drag through, you see that we've got this nice black and white mat. And that black and white mat could be used to map color or to mask parts of an image. Let's put all the pieces together. Jump back into the project here. And we've got this truck color here. And I'm just going to go ahead and rename that truck mat. We're going to go ahead and drop in that original clip and that mat on top of it. There we go. And as we drag through, you see that the white mat is right on top of the red parts of the truck. Easy enough. Let's just toss in a new color here. Layer, new, solid. Let's say we want a blue truck. And on that blue solid, we will tell it to use a track mat of the Luma on top. As you do that there, you see that it's masking. Now, to make that a little softer, 
instead of normal mode, I might go into color or hue, but color did a really nice job there. We got just a little bit of fringe at the edges and the shadows, but that's a piece of cake. Remember, we could select that mat and apply a levels adjustment to it. And just play with those midpoints to clean up some of those areas. There we go. That's looking pretty good. And you see that it remapped the color. So I have gone from a red truck to a green truck, and then from a green truck to a blue truck, or whatever color I want. By selecting that and just going to the solid settings, I could dial in any color I want. And as you see there, we could drag on through and assign anything we need to that truck. You might need to tweak a little bit, but all in all, that's pretty cool. And if you needed to, you could strip the color out of that truck layer before you tossed on the new color. So let's do that to give us even more control. I'm going to take this and add a new adjustment layer. On that adjustment layer, we'll call that DSAT. Duplicate that matte layer. We'll apply a desaturation effect. We'll do vibrance here. Strip out the color. Do a little levels adjustment if necessary. Just so we get a nice base layer there for the truck. Turn on the track mat, Luma. And you see that now it's isolated itself. And then there is our color overlay layer. And we can go into those solid settings and totally dial in any color we want, giving us that flexibility, in this case, for a nice purple truck. And remember, you could change the blend mode as necessary, go with a darker one like multiply, or maybe something a little bit gentler like soft light or overlay, and you get a really nice remapping effect there, and not a single selection or matte or rotoscope to be done just understanding how channels work and how powerful that color is. Hope you got an idea on just one of the cool things you could do when you learn how to work with Photoshop Extended and After Effects. For Creative Cow, my name's Rich Harrington.